Good morning, good morning, good morning. How is everybody? It's Thursday the 18th. Ah, oh, it's Thursday the 18th of May! Hooray! <laughs> I actually had forgotten that. I'd forgotten that. You know, you sort of got into, I've got into the routine of driving to work. So I'm like, yeah, I know I'm going to work. I know. Actually, I've got no patience booked in. I'm just going in to collect the wide variety of gifts and cards that will be waiting for me when I arrive at my place of work. Because my staff love me so much. And moreover, they are very frightened of being sacked. So I should imagine there'll be a, quite a few votive offerings there. No, there won't. There'll be a card. And if I'm lucky, a cup of coffee. So, ooh. so how are you today? Yeah, yeah, well, okay, fair enough. I'm feeling well. It rained last night. It's actually warm now. This is, I, again, you know, when you're 2 times 29, which is what I am, you've sort of uh, been around the block, haven't you? Seen it a few things, a few times. You get the benefit of learning by repetition, don't you, I suppose? And I found, actually, something again, I found quite early on in my life, which is that around about the time of my birthday is about the time that everything starts to warm up. You think, oh, well, perhaps April will be warm or... Uh, you know, you get into May, May will be warm, but no. And the, the way I found out was that um, when you were young and you had a party, the number of people that you could have to your party was directly proportional to whether it was inside or outside. If it was inside, then it was probably like eight to ten people at the most, you know, your parents wanted running around like lunatics. If it's outside in the garden, then the sky's the limit, isn't it? 20, 30. Especially when you get to the teenage years and, you know, someone uh, hangs around outside the off-licence to try and get some alcohol. Oh, God. I never remember. I'll forget. The first time I drank alcohol, because you haven't got a clue, do you? You have not got a clue. I had no formal training in alcohol from my parents whatsoever. So I went in, uh, went in the old off-licence and I said, uh, and I was panicking, obviously I was panicking. I was probably about eight. No, I was probably about 16, 14 or something. And the bloke said, yeah, yeah, what, what, could you, what do you want? What can I help you with? So I just pointed at a bottle at random on the, on the shelf and I said, I'll, I'll have that. He said, that? And I said, yeah, all right then. <laughs> so he wrapped it up for me, took it home unbottled it, tried to, took it to a party, tried to drink it, ah, oh, <laughs> horrible. I mean, alcohol is horrible anyway, isn't it, when you first start to drink it, but this was great, it was disgusting. Anyway, only turned out it was creme de month. <laughs> we, were, we were trying to drink it, like, you know, drink it neat out of a bottle, a half a bottle, a quarter bottle. We were caught I went to this party with a quarter bottle of creme de menthe and we passed it around and all tried to drink it and we all decided that it was an attractive colour but absolutely disgusting. <laughs> but anyway, that was my introduction but <clears throat> soon uh, we soon got past that and someone actually, no, we didn't have the internet in those days, you couldn't look up, you know, how to make a decent drink. And we, all, we just had to do it through trial and error. So, I haven't got any patience booked in. Why am I, why are you going to work angry? Why? On your birthday. Do you work on your birthday? I used to, I have a rule. I had a rule. I had a rule, then I didn't have a rule, then I had it back again, because it was a good rule, and that is that I never worked on my birthday. And in the days when I saw 40 patients a day, and I was on the NHS, and I was working Saturday mornings, then the fact that I took off my birthday was not a big deal. Do you know, it, didn't, it was not like a massive, in the great ocean of my life's events, it wasn't more than a drop. However, especially when you get on like a capitation plan and you're making your money anyway, then 
you know, in a, in sort of that, again, that softens the blow of taking a day off, doesn't it? Because the den plan doesn't know you're taking a day off. They might know if you took a couple of years off. <laughs> but they don't know you're taking a day off. Your den plan patients don't. So, and my DPAS patients don't. You know, they've got, well, I suppose you have to arrange cover. The smaller the surgery, you know, and it does to get to be a bit of a pain because I'm going to, um, Ah, now, I went to Pepper Pig World and we're actually uh, got another holiday planned. I'm actually going to Centre Parks. Oh, yes. I last of the big spenders, me. I mean, I, I can have fun just not being at work. Do you know what I mean? It's like uh, the women don't like that, do they? They say, ah, I've, you know, it's not holiday for me. I'm still doing all the cooking and the washing. And I never could stop complaining, women. So, uh, anyway, we're going to Centre Parks and we'll probably, you know, eat out most nights. It's not, it's like, uh, it's not cheap when you're there to, you know, I mean, if it was up to Old Angry, I'd go for a week and take seven pack lunches. I'd make it all in advance. And you can do that, you know, they don't mind. You can take it all in, in the boot of your car in a big cooler, you know, food for the week. Probably a good idea just in case there's a nuclear holocaust just to give yourself that'd be a good advertising slogan wouldn't it for centre parks come and stay here for a week it's like there's a nuclear holocaust put your training into action put your uh, put your reserve plan into action stay, see if you can stay at centre parks for a week without hiring a bike or buying anything any food from any of our shops that's quite a challenge actually I might try and do that Anyway, you know, in the tradition of pushing the boat out and having big holidays and stuff like that, I've decided that we're going to go to Centre Parks. So, and we're going as a family, which, I mean, you know, you do because that's small fun, isn't it, when you've got grandchildren and that to go as a family. You don't have to enjoy yourself, do you? You can watch them enjoying themselves. So you sort of live vicariously, you know, when you get to my great age. That's a brilliant way to live. Well, I've done it all, haven't I? I've done it all. I've been a child, I brought up children, and now I can just watch everybody else. Not that I'm like, I'm not one of those granddads that says, I'm glad when they go home, you know, or uh, that's a good thing about other people's children is you can give them back. I'm not like that at all. I do, honestly, I would keep all the children I've ever been put in charge of, except that I tried that once and I got into big trouble. So, but, I do like, I do enjoy playing with children because that's, I've still got the mentality, you know, I'm like, I will, you know, I'll be sitting in the playroom with some wooden blocks and I'll be sitting there with a, with a two-year-old or a three-year-old, we'll be playing with the wooden blocks and I will be having as much fun as they are, I, I will. And then if they don't, uh, you know, if they want the blocks, which is fine, they're a bit funny, aren't they, two-year-olds? They're a bit possessive sometimes. Not very emotionally mature, I've found. Um, not very logical. Then, uh, you know, then fine, I just move on and play with the cooker and make a, a plastic hamburger and some plastic chips or something. Better than a real hamburger and real chips. Oh, God, I've got to go up to the hospital tomorrow. Got to go and get weighed. And they don't nag you. I mean, I'll tell you what, the real reason I don't like going is just because of the inefficiency. It's just the stress. It's the stress of going along and being told that you've got an appointment for half past one and then going there at half past one and not being seen till half past three. That's, you know, sitting there for two hours like, like you mean nothing. You mean nothing to them, which you don't. You're just a means to an end. Their job is what they are interested in, their job and their wages and how much they can skive off, how little work they can do, how many jokes they can tell each other, how many cups of coffee they can cram in. All these things are important to them, not me. I am not important to them. If I don't turn up, they'll just be like, okay, F off, F off back into your, your doctor. You know, that's it, mate. You've had it with us. We'll give you a chance and you missed it. You blew it. So I've got to drag myself all the way on the train. But I've got to wait until, because I'm not spending 60 quid to go in and out of London on the train, I'll tell you. 
I'm gonna wait until the cheap, you know, old angry, knows the value of a dollar. I'm gonna wait until it's a cheap rate and then gonna get on the train and then go in, get weighed, get weighed, have a quick chat, come home again. All this, all this could be done. My GP could do this. I don't even know why I'm going in. They've not even told me why I'm going in. I mean, they would say, normally, if a patient comes to see me, they know why they're coming in, don't they? They've got to get their root treatment finished off, they're having a tooth out, etc. I don't know why I'm going in. It's just a, a follow-up appointment. It's a follow-up. I'm a, just going to be a statistic, you know? You know when you read those um, scientific things that say, we had a cohort that started off a 10,000 cohort, and then after five years, cohort had been reduced to 7,500. I'm going to be one of those dots that's missing if I don't go. So, I figured they were nice enough to slice me open. I should be nice enough to go along and get weighed. It's a sort of a quid pro quo, do you know what I mean? It's a polite thing to do. So I'm going to go along and make sure that they don't miss a dot on their stats. But then I think that's it after tomorrow, I think we'll call it a day. I can't be missing a day off work. This is what I'm saying. You don't work on your birthday, right? So what happened was, in the old days, when we were paid fee per item, oh my God, everybody knew to within a new pence how much money they earned in a day. We all had a thing called a day book and we used to write down everything we did, the fee. Especially if you're an associate. And then you added it all up at the end of the day and you said, oh, I've had a good day today, you know, I've done, 120 quid or something or bad day I've only done 96 quid but then the next day you'd start a denture and you'd book all the book all the the income from the denture wouldn't you on day one so you'd say oh yeah if I started a denture today I had a good day but um, and that's why um, nobody would ever no bugger would ever take a day off try and get people to go on a postgraduate course there's a lorry reversing. This is my new holder, by the way. What do you think? Do you like it? Of course you can't see it, can you? <laughs> but I mean, you can see how shaky it is. And I think it is less shaky because it's not less than, it's not on a bug, or a stalk, which is like the previous one was. The other one, this is a bit more squat. Do you know what I mean? It's not quite so good because it does cover up the, the volume buttons. But then, you know, in life, what is perfect? So, so yeah, so so um, what happened was nobody would go on a postgraduate course unless they got reimbursed. So they used to put in claim forms to the Department of Health for lost income. Well, not lost income, actually. Lost uh, travelling expenses and subsistence. You could get a section something claim, anyway. And um, there was a massive demand for postgraduate courses on Saturday. Because although some dentists, including me, did work on a Saturday, it was generally regarded as about the only day you could get any bugger to come along to a course. Because they wouldn't come Monday to Friday. Nowadays it's all a bit different, you know, people are a bit more laid back. Now, now, I mean, I can book around a day if I want to take a day off. I mean, even if we're babysitting the grandchildren and I want to take a Thursday off, I can shuffle my appointments round. To, to give myself Thursday off. But then, as I say, you've got this problem of cover, haven't you? Like, if someone rings up with an emergency, which they do, I mean, this is, again, this is God. This is proof of existence through sense of humour. What happens is you'll go two months with absolutely nobody ringing you up, asking to come in urgently. You take one effing day off, and at nine o'clock, someone rings up and says they're in severe pain probably from something you did two weeks ago and they need to you know and it's a Friday or something and they can't wait till Monday and so you have to go in that's why I think it's important not to live too far away from the practice I mean you as you know I live about 25 minutes away because this is only the second half of my journey the first half of the journey is the journey to the paper shop and then the second half of the journey is uh, is the bit of my video which is about 20, 21 minutes. And I did, um, you know, I had a, my, my first boss lived about a mi an hour away. 
on the basis that he didn't want to be recognised. He said he didn't want to go around Tesco's and have people come up to him saying, oh, hello, hello. So, I, and I've solved that problem because I never go around Tesco's. I never do any shopping. And he, Mrs. Angry does all that. And nobody, rec and didn't, you know what, they put, I didn't recognise you with your clothes on. Very funny. So I've set an absolute upper limit of half an hour. So that's when I bought the surgery, uh, and it took a while because, you know, I mean, how many surgeries come up for sale that are of the type that you want at the price that you can afford within half an hour's commuting distance of your home? You know, especially when you don't live really near a population centre, which I don't. I mean, I'm about, I could easily get to Canterbury and back in half an hour. But I mean, I'm not, I don't live in Canterbury, do you know what I mean? It's not, I don't live in a, I don't live in North London or somewhere where, mind you, North London, probably couldn't commute anywhere in half an hour. So I don't mind so much if someone rings me up and says, you know, you know, I've got a trouble because I can pop back and, and also I think from the commuting point of view, the half an hour commute is not a big deal, you know, it's in like a, almost an hour out of your day, but it's an hour when you, you, um, you know, you can relax a bit, you can listen to the radio or something, or if you're, have got angry genes in you, you can utilise it, can't you? You can put it to good use, you can do something. I mean, what can you do driving along? Not a lot, really. You know, a bit difficult. I tried the Times crossword, that didn't work out all that well. So, you can, you can, but you can talk, can't you? So, I can, certainly. <laughs> And uh, yeah, so I'll put it to good use, which is why um, I think we're coming up to 50 of these podcasts, vodcasts, vodcasts, I don't know what they call. Yeah, so my advice to you, and it's always, this is all, these, these videos are chock full of useful dental advice. Anyone who thinks that they are just me rambling along, you know, just talking about any old bollocks, I think it seriously mischaracterises the nature of these, because there are nuggets hidden in here. They're well hidden, admittedly, but they're here and they are nuggets. So, when you set your surgery up, half an hour max, all right? No more, because otherwise you're just gonna spend your whole time, you know, ruining the journey. The journey in for an hour, the journey back for an hour. And I tell you that like a one hour journey always involves some sort of traffic jam. It always involves some sort of, you know, and this is your life you're wasting here. The old seconds are ticking away, you know. You've got to get on with it. I mean, I can say that with some authority today. Got to even get on with it, okay? I mean, I, I, would, I am happy to share with you that if I died tomorrow, I'd be pissed off. No, I would. Actually, I was going to say I'd be happy, but I wouldn't. I'd be, I'd be royally pissed off. I've got to tell you that. <laughs> so when you hear that I go, Right? When you hear old Watty, you know old Watty who was involved in dental politics from when he was a student in 1976 through to 1981 when he qualified, shook hands with Virginia Bottomley, Brian Mawinney, all the great, the good, the rich and the shameless, who was involved in dentistry for 40, 50 years, whatever, was on the radio with Jimmy Hill, etc., etc. When you hear, I oh, finally, you know, oh, Derek Watson died. Did you know Derek Watson died? Yeah, it was Derek Watson. You know, Derek Watson. Oh, yeah, 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 I remember, I think I remember him. Just, I just want you to remember that I will have been royally pissed off that I've died, okay? But having said that, I do honestly believe I have crammed in twice what most people fit in in a lifetime. If you count the stuff I don't really want to tell you about, probably three times. But let's say twice, for the sake of argument. Okay, twice, two lives, which means I am literally whatever two times fifty-eight is, hundred and sixteen. I'm a, and I look good for it, don't I? Considering I've had two entire fifty-eight-year-old lives and still got the barnet. It's not died. It's not died. It's, I've got a bit of grey. I keep a bit of grey. Actually, I dye that black and that bit grey just to make it look, you know, authentic. There we are. So, what am I going to do at work? I don't know. I'm just going to go around. I'm going to socialise. I'm going to have half an hour saying hello to everybody. I'm going to check that the patient who's coming for this big implant case today has paid. <laughs> That's why I'm coming in. And then, 
I'll check that all the members of staff have turned up and not decided to have a day off as well without telling me. And then I'm going to go home again. We're going out tonight. Well, actually, I'm seeing the staff tonight. We're going to a local play. The guy next door is um, uh, uh, a thespian, you know, in the local, what's it? And we're, um, we're going to go and see him in his play. So, oh, I'm going to have the big parking space as well. Why not? I never park in this one. So lovely. Happy birthday to me. Thank you for all the cards and the presents I've received. <laughs> and I'll probably talk to you tomorrow. Bye.